Hi, I'm Elaine Wyshuttle, a children's librarian from the Milton Public Library, and I'm here today with more tales from the story hat. I want to start off with an old Celtic tale called Too Many Fairies. There once was an old woman who lived by herself in a little cottage, and oh dear, there were dirty dishes in the sink, the floor needed sweeping, the bed hadn't been made, and her knitting was nowhere near done. And she looked around her little house and thought, oh, work, 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 how I hate it. I hate it. And then suddenly she heard rap, rap, rap on the door. And a little voice called out, your luck has come. Let me in and you'll work no more. That sounded good. She opened the door and a little fairy ran in and ran right over to the sink and began clattering around with the dishes and washing them. Clankety, 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 clankety. Oh, well, that's very nice, thought the little old woman. If she's going to do the dishes, perhaps I'll sweep the floor. And she picked up the broom and began to start sweeping. And as she swept, she said, oh, Work, 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 how I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And immediately, bang, 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 on the door. And another little voice called out, your luck has come, let me in, and you'll work no more. She opened the door, and a second little fairy raced into the house, grabbed the broom, and began sweeping like mad, swishity, 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 swishity. Clankety, 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 clankety. Oh, thought the old woman. Well, if they're going to do the dishes and the sweeping, perhaps I'll go up and make the bed. And she went into the bedroom and began to shake out the uh, covers and the, the uh, bedclothes and sheets. And as she did it, she said to herself, ah, work, work, work. How I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Knock, knock, knock on the door. Your luck has come, let me in and you'll work no more. Quickly, she opened the door and in rushed a third little fairy who went right into the bedroom and began to flop the pillows and shake the bed linens all around and smooth them out. Flumpity, flumpity, flumpity. Swishity, swishity, swishity. Clankity, clankity, clankity. Oh, goodness thought the little old woman, this is very nice. I'll sit down and I'll do my knitting. And she picked up her yarn and needles and began knitting, clickety, 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 click. And as she worked, she said to herself, oh, work, 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 how I hate it. And knock, knock, knock came on the door. She ran over and opened it to another little fairy who said, your luck has come, let me in and you'll work no more. And immediately that fourth little fairy picked up the knitting needles and yarn and started to knit away. Clickety, 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 click. Flumpity, 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 flump. Swishity, 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 swish. Clankity, 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 clank. The little old woman sat down in her chair and rocked a little bit and watched and then Everything was done. The dishes were done. The floor was swept. The bed was made. And the knitting was all finished. Oh, thank you so much, said the little old woman. But before she could even finish, the fairies jumped up and began undoing everything. The one dirtied up the dishes. Another unraveled all of the yarn. The third went up and pulled all the covers off the bed. And the last one dumped more dirt on the floor. And then they started cleaning it all up again. Clankety, 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 swishity, swishity, swishity. Flumpity, 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 clickety, clickety, clickety. Oh, there's too many fairies, said the old woman. There are just too many fairies. My house is full of them. Stop, she cried, stop. They ignored her. Off she ran down the road to see the wise woman. 
And she said, my house is full of raggedy fairies and I can't stand it. And the old wise old woman said, oh dear, they've come to help. You haven't been complaining, have you? Um, well, uh, maybe a little, said the old woman. Oh dear, said the wise woman. You'll never get rid of them. Oh, there must be something I can do, cried the little old woman. Well, thought the wise woman. Okay, let's try this. Go home and stand just outside your door and call, come quick fairies, come quick fairies. And when they run out of the house to see what's happening, you dash back in and close the door and lock it and don't open it for anything. And then you must mess up everything in the house. Okay, said the little old lady. She went home. When she got to the cottage, she stood outside and called out, fairies, come quick, fairies, come quick. And they all ran out of the door and looked around. What, 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 they said. And the old woman dumped back in, closed the door tight, threw the bolt, and then she went and she stood the broom upside down in a corner. And she turned all the dishes in the sink upside down. She went up and she tied all the bedclothes in knots. And then she unraveled all of the knitting and stuck her needles into the ball of yarn. And then she sat, and pretty soon the rapping came on the door. Your luck has come, your luck has come. Let us in, let us in, and you'll work no more. The little old woman said nothing. She didn't even move. And then she heard one of the fairies call out, Broom, broom, come let us in. But the broom answered, I'm upside down, I can't come. There was a pause. Dishes, dishes, come let us in. We're all upside down, said the dishes. We can't come. There was another pause. Bed covers, bed covers, someone called. Come let us in. Oh, we're all tangled up, said the bed covers. We can't come. A long pause this time, and then Knitting, knitting, knitting needles, come let us in. But the knitting needles called out, we're stuck in the yarn, we can't come. Oh, goodness. With that, the fairies grumbled and complained, and finally they stomped off back up the hill to their fairy house. The old woman sat for a while, enjoying the quiet. Oh. This is much better, she thought. Then she got up, she washed up her dishes, she swept her floor, she made her bed, and then sat down and started knitting. Clickety, clickety, clickety. But soon she said, work, 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 work. How I, how I love it, I love it, I love it, she said, and was never bothered with fairies again. November is when we celebrate Thanksgiving. I guess the little old lady with the fairies was finally thankful that she'd gotten rid of them. But I have another story about Thanksgiving. It's about the Tappleton family. It's Thanksgiving at the Tappletons. Thanksgiving at the Tappletons was always a big day. First of all, there were all of the Tappletons. Mr. Tappleton, Mrs. Tappleton, Jenny Tappleton, Kenny Tappleton, grandmother and grandfather Tappleton, Uncle Fritz, and Aunt Hedda, and of course, a turkey, and all the trimmings. Well, early Thanksgiving morning, before it was even light, Mrs. Tappleton got up and went down to the kitchen and turned on the oven. And then she opened the refrigerator and she took out the turkey. And as she was carrying it, 
across the room to put it in the pan to roast, there came a knock at the door. It was Mike, the milkman, and he called out, Hey, hi there, Mrs. Templeton, or Mrs. Tappleton. I've, I've brought you some, some eggnog. I thought you might like it for the holiday. Well, she had opened the door for him, and as she reached out to take the eggnog from him, the turkey slipped and dropped towards the ground. Now, on a normal day, it might not have been too bad, but this Thanksgiving was very cold, and the step was icy and the turkey hit the step and started to slide. Oh, stop it, cried Mrs. Tappleton. Mike turned and he raced after it as the turkey slid off the porch, down the walk, into the street, across the street, over the hill, with Mike running after it and Mrs. Tappleton running after him screaming, stop it, stop it, and the turkey slid right down the hill, plop into the lake and bubbled down out of sight. No turkey. She put the eggnog in the refrigerator and sat at the table wondering what to do. A short time later, Mr. Tappleton came downstairs and took a deep breath. I don't smell any turkey, he said. Of course you don't, said Mrs. Tappleton. You have a cold. I don't have a cold, said Mr. Tappleton. Behind his back, she shook some pepper in the air. Achoo! Mr. Tappleton sneezed. See, I told you you have a cold. Oh, said Mr. Tappleton. Well, I'd better go get the pies. He got his hat and his coat and his gloves, and Mrs. Tappleton handed him his boots and said, you better put these on. I know for a fact it's a little slippery out there. He put on his boots and started off down to the bake shop. Well, when he got to Sims Bakery, there was a line all the way out the door. Now, Mr. Tappleton did not like standing in lines. And so he decided he would go into the diner next door and have a cup of coffee and wait till things thinned out a bit. And he sat in the diner and he looked at the paper and he drank his coffee. And when he finally went back to Sims Bakery, the line was gone. And so were all the pies. No pumpkin pies, no mints, no rhubarb, no apple, no pies. Oh dear, thought Mr. Tappleton, I can't go home empty handed. So he looked at Mrs. Sims behind the counter and said, Give me two boxes wrapped up with string, please. Empty boxes, she said. Mm-hmm, said Mr. Tappleton. Okay, she took two pie boxes, empty, tied string around them and handed them to him. And he took them back home and presented them to Mrs. Tappleton. My, these feel nice and light, she said. Oh, of course, said Mr. Tappleton. Mrs. Sims prides herself on how light her pies are. Well, they continued to worry about the morning. And uh, Mr. Tappleton put the pie boxes in the refrigerator. And uh, Mrs. Tappleton decided to set the table anyway. And so she was putting the plates around and she called to Kenny and she told Kenny you can get the salad ready, she said. I've got um, some lettuce in the crisper and radishes and carrots, so you can get that ready. Kenny's face paled, oh dear. Just the day before, he had emptied all of the vegetables out of the crisper and taken them into school to feed the rabbits in Mr. Butterworth's classroom. Oh dear, he thought. So he took the salad bowl and he covered it with aluminum foil and slid it into the back of the refrigerator. The rest of the family was getting ready to go down to the train station and pick up grandfather and grandmother Tappleton and Uncle Fritz and Aunt Hetta. Jenny was staying home to mash the potatoes. This was her special Thanksgiving job, and she loved mashing potatoes. 
The others set off in the car, and Jenny got the potatoes off the stove where they had been bubbling merrily away and thought, I'm going to do an extra good job this year. I'm going to put them in the blender. And she cut pieces and dumped them into the blender. And just as she was about to put the lid on and start the blender, the phone rang. And it was her friend Mary. If there was one thing that Jenny liked more than mashing potatoes, it was talking on the phone to her friend Jenny. And she stood there and she talked and she talked and she talked. And she might have been there talking still had not something thwomp gone splat on the back of her head. She turned around to see what it was and splat! Another glump of something hit her in the face. And when she looked, she realized she turned on the blender, but she'd not put the lid on it. And the potatoes were flying all over the kitchen. Oh no, she said. She ran, she turned off the blender. She hung up on her friend Mary without even saying goodbye and then began cleaning the potatoes out of her hair and off of her face and off of every other surface, surface in the kitchen. And finally, she just put the empty pot back on the stove and left it sitting there. The family arrived back and they all gathered around the table. Oh boy, am I hungry, said Uncle Fritz and his stomach rumbled. I'm so hungry I could eat an elephant said Grandfather Tappleton. Well, as soon as we carve the turkey, Grandmother Tappleton will ask the Thanksgiving blessing because that was what she always did. So Mr. Tappleton got up and he went and opened up the oven and said, the turkey's gone, and started looking all over. He opened cabinets, he looked in the broom, broom closet, he looked under the table. What happened to the turkey? <clears throat> well, said Mrs. Tappleton, and she told them how the turkey had slid off the porch and down the walk and through the gate and across the road and down plop into the pond. Ah, oh, so much for the turkey, said Uncle Fritz, and his stomach rumbled a little louder. I'm so hungry I could eat two elephants, said Grandfather Tappleton. Well, Kenny, get the salad, said Mrs. Tappleton. I'll get it, said Jenny, and she raced to the refrigerator and brought out the bowl and set it on the table and peeled off the foil So much for the salad, said Aunt Hetta. Um, I, I fed all the vegetables to the rabbits at school, said Kenny. Oh dear, oh dear, sighed Uncle Fritz, and his stomach rumbled even louder. I could eat three elephants, said Grandfather Tappleton. I'll get the potatoes, said Kenny and he raced over to the stove and brought the pot to the table and took the lid off and... Um, the, the blender went a little wild, said Jenny. So much for the potatoes, said Uncle Fritz, and his stomach rumbled even louder. I could eat four elephants, said Grandfather Tappleton. Well, at least we have the pies. Yes, said Grandmother, and as soon as we cut the pies, I will say the Thanksgiving blessing. So Mrs. Tappleton went over and got the boxes and untied the string and opened the boxes. You carried home empty boxes, she said to Mr. Tappleton, who just sat with his head in his hand. Oh, dear. Oh, Uncle Fritz muttered something that couldn't be heard above the noise of his rumbling stomach. Oh, I could eat five elephants, 
said Grandfather Tappleton. <sighs> oh dear, no turkey, no trimmings, said Jenny, and tears began to trickle down her cheeks. There's nothing to say a prayer for. Yes, there is, said Grandmother Tappleton. And she told them all to close their eyes and hold hands around the table. And then she said, turkeys come and turkeys go and trimmings can be lost, we know. But we're together, that's what matters not what sits upon our platters. Amen. Oh, that was a wonderful prayer, said Mrs. Tappleton. And then she said, I know, I've got some liverwurst and cheese in the refrigerator. I'll help make sandwiches, said Mr. Tappleton. I'll get the pickles, said Jenny. And, and I'll open a jar of applesauce for dessert said Kenny. And so they all had liverwurst and cheese sandwiches with pickles and everyone had enough to eat after all. And what was even more, they were all together for Thanksgiving. And that's Thanksgiving at the Tappletons. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you enjoy yourselves and have fun with turkey, if you like turkey, and all of the trimmings. I like stuffing. Bye.